Ready to go? I'm ready to go. Thanks for joining me today, guys. We're out here on the California Delta. I am with the fishing instructor himself, Randy Pringle. I talked to Randy at the ISE show, and I, you know, as I was talking to you, I said, there's no, no one better to do a, um, I guess, a primer for what's gonna be happening on the Delta come this spring. We, we did some, some prospecting. We won't talk about the fishing. We both got a bite, though. We got a bite. Yeah. Um, two feet of visibility. Uh, 48 degree water temperature this morning went up to about 50 51 um, so Randy the first thing I want to talk about is water conditions what what is it gonna have to be before you really like it out here and I know it's weather dependent but what would you like to see as far as water clarity uh, water temperature and what the the weather pattern is great question I think right now I want um, weather that is consistent Mm -hmm. So, like today is a beautiful day. If you're looking at it right now behind us, you're going, man, it was a beautiful day. But two days ago, we had rain and it was 30 plus and freezing it's weather. Freezing, yeah. Yep, you were talking about the freezing weather this weekend. And now we're here on Tuesday. Uh, yesterday was cloudy, but it was got sunny in the afternoon. Today was beautiful, had some fog. Tomorrow's supposed to be okay. The next day is supposed to start going the other way again. It's supposed to have a front come back in. So, when I call it the roller coaster weather, Bass, especially Florida bass, don't like weather that goes like this, roller tates, you know? They don't like that. They want a consistent straight line of weather. When you get that, I think you're gonna see a lot more anglers going and having a lot more fun on the Delta. So the first thing we're gonna want is for the weather to even out with no spikes in, in um, barometer and, and uh, nights that aren't freezing. Now, what kind of water clarity are you going to be looking for before it gets really consistent? So we got in some water today that I could say we were in two, maybe two three feet, feet yeah. maybe. And when you threw like a spinnerbait with a bright color, you could see it when it hit the water. And I think because they're not active yet, we're not going to get the bites. But I think that the clarity goes up one more number on the clarity chart, give me that three to four foot visibility. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll crush a lot of fish. But right now, it's it's temperature and it's weather and how is the how what kind of temperature do you want to correspond with that say three to four feet of visibility is it 52 54 55 what do you need that for? 54 55 okay. 56 those are the bonus numbers that because at 48 those fish are like going dude i ain't getting out of bed okay you know i'm not doing yeah. it and then we had a full moon a couple days ago and now we got another full moon if we get a spike there will be a couple of little specific areas that's got warmer water. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see some of those big mamas come up and spawn only because mother nature is gonna tell them what's, what's right or what's wrong. Okay, so what we're looking for is some stable weather, the water to just increase in clarity just a, a foot or so. We're looking for about 50, I'll say 53 to 55 degree water temps. At that point, the river's going to be in, in shape. It may not be in perfect shape, but it's going to be in shape to where we can come out and start doing some damage. Okay, so it's not time to call in sick to work yet. It's not time to take your vacation. So let's say it's, you know, I'll keep you guys informed on what's going out here on the weekly reports. We're going to have that, whether it's in two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, when things get right, what are you going to do? Talk about your mindset when you see that water getting right randy pringles coming out with 50 years of experience what are you going to be looking for as far as baits and, and areas so what we did today um, is we fished three major things um, i went out and fished some flats where i know that the fish do move up on um, and i fished that area for a while checking the temperature checking the clarity from there i moved over to deep water where it comes off and goes from Oh, three foot, four foot, five, seven, 15, 15, back up to three, five, seven. It goes like that. So we're fishing that trough. And we saw some fish on the screen. They just weren't going to have it. Don't know if they're catfish, don't know what they were, but they were not going to chew. Then I checked that water out. Then we went back of a, a creek or a slough mm -hmm. and we went back in there. We saw something on the uh, live target on the Lawrence and we looked at that and you could see a couple of fish jumping away from you know, the trolling motor as it went through some of the weeds. We were fishing a little trough there too. Mm -hmm. Getting in that depth of water. So I'm gonna still look for those three things because I've got to find a pattern. 
And by utilizing those three uh, separations, the rock bank, because of the heat, I'm looking for, we talked about this a little bit this morning, I'm looking for north, west, uh, east, and south. I'm going to walk down lanes that are east to west sloughs. And the reason why the east to west is because you're going to have the sun mm -hmm. hitting that south facing bank mm -hmm. on a north side. And those are the fish that are going to get active first. The first. So they could be on rocks. We talked about, we were driving mm -hmm. down the bank and you go, oh, I like this bank over here. I go, yeah, that's a good one. And just, I like it this time of year is because the sun's going to hit it first. Mm -hmm. And east to west sloughs, primarily on the California Delta, if you think about it, we're here at Lads right now. And if you go anywhere that way or that way, any slough that is east to west has less water movement in the middle of the slough. Gives you warmth. I've got a question for you. Somebody that doesn't know the Delta, they're coming down here and you know they fish it maybe 10 times a year. Should they start uh, fishing somewhere around the main channel or would you, you suggest finding a slough and, and working your way back or maybe starting in the back of a slough, work your way to the main channel? Which way do you go? So the main channel is I leave the main channel alone because it's going to have your coldest and probably your least visibility mm -hmm. on your main channel. You want somewhere where the water can settle out, and that is your back sloughs that doesn't have a creek that's going to enter it, or in a bay mm -hmm. that the fish that doesn't suck all that water out. It just it doesn't flush all the way, so it flushes halfway. So if you're going into like, you know, the Frank's tracks, the Mildreds, the you know all these big bays that have water that can move out but move back, and it never really went anywhere. Mm -hmm. Soon as you get to the mouth of some of those Old River, San Joaquin, Sacramento, when you start getting the, the, all those sloughs there, those are main through affairs of water. And those waters, you're, you're throwing a lot of water. And with all those creeks coming into those main, you're going to get a lot more mud. So I want to be off of those. Mm -hmm. So if I had a guy come in and say, Randy, I'm going to go to the California Delta. I'm coming from Southern California. I don't fish there a lot and I want to go fish. Where should I go? And that's your question. Then I would tell them, go down, make a left or right turn, find your first large oxbow. That's just a belly in and belly out. Mm -hmm. Fish the back corner of the oxbow. So if water goes in an oxbow this way and water comes out both sides, somewhere in the middle, it's got to just a drop okay. and rises. So the water doesn't get flushed. It doesn't. The water doesn't come down that oxbow and go out to outgo tide or go down. That oxbow is not big enough. Are you going to um, try to concentrate on an incoming or an outgoing? Fish set up on both tides differently. So when people ask me which is the better tide, I tell them moving. So it's not <laughs> incoming or outgoing for me. It's how the fish are positioning them. So I'll give you a perfect example. If you're going from an outgo tide going out, the inner bank of a point this side on an outgo will have less weeds than this side because an incoming water mm -hmm. is less friction against that bank outgoing has the tide mm -hmm. and it has a the river system so yeah. this side is going to have less weeds so you know that side's going to be deeper knowing that in your mind you want to fish stuff that is going to create that eddy keeping close to the current but fish in the eddy side like a trout fisherman would. Yeah. You were a trout fisherman. Saying, I think a lot of people have a hard time grabbing that concept. If you're not out here enough, when, when you do get out here, you really have to pay attention to, number one, which way the tide's going, but what that tide is doing. Uh, this year, we're gonna have a lot of water coming down. We're gonna have some uh, snow runoff. We're probably gonna have a lot more outgo than ingo. That's incoming. Yeah, no, and, and so and that's we, exactly what I was saying. When, like I said, you're going to find that if you go, drove up to a point and you go, I, got, I love this point, you should know if it's an water going this way, that's an outgo, the right side, the weeds are going to be further back away from that point versus the left side. And it's because as much energy hits that bank, it deflects off, tears away the root structure of the weeds. So fish on that right side is probably going to be a little further back. So when you make a cast on the right side and the left side, the cast on the right side will always be longer because you talked about that, you like to make a long cast on certain mm -hmm. banks so you can cover that mm -hmm. trough. Same thing on the point. And you gotta know this stuff. You just gotta pay attention to it and it'll teach you on a low tide. And I think a tip would be, anytime you come to a point out here or an area that you think looks good, maybe it's Rock Tule, Rock Tule, just don't fish that area. If you come to a point, fish 
20 or 30 feet from one side of the point and move around it and then really concentrate on am I getting fish here am I getting fish there and then you could start putting patterns together that's 100 that's a great tip okay, let's Brown. make it a little more crazy so you get those fish on the one side of that bank one day you come back the next day if you're going to fish that same side make sure you're at the same current now that's not running the tide but it's starting to pay attention to the current and that's the first lesson that I think most people start to learn before they start to really run the tide so you know uh, be aware of those tides are moving in they're moving out you catch fish on one side at one tide you go to a point you catch them on the other side of the point at a different tide so just be aware of that. so we got the water temp we got the clarity uh, we're talking a little bit about you know how to how to approach these places give me just two baits that you should start off with this spring maybe two colors and and then maybe just you know maybe um, a cadence or a pattern that you would suggest so just real quick so these guys have have a, a starting point when they're at the dock they can throw they can say I heard Randy he said if I keep this and this on with these colors and do this I've got a, the best chance of catching fish because we still have weeds in the Delta and but they're not as bad as they ever was. They're I clean. Mean, they're they're, they're pretty nice. clean. It's solid. It's, it's solid. I exactly. eat those weeds. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Said, hear that? He's going to eat them. Blue cheese, maybe a little ranch, get some tomatoes. I'm bringing them next time we go well, out, dude. You know what? I'll do that if you come out. I learned, I'm always, every time I go with Randy, I learn something. Today I learned that Randy is a country singer by profession. I, I sang country and western, rock and roll, Motown. I did uh, entertainment for 16 and a half years. So, I sang on the tour. I'll grab a plate of these weeds and have you sing me a little song and I'll leave. So anyhow, Serenade on your, you get some, uh, uh, get some Italian music. We'll go for okay. it. Okay, give me the baits, the colors, and how you want to fish them. Two major baits I'm going to throw. Number one is going to be a worm. It's going to be a dark color worm. Because you have still a dingy water. With weight or without weight? So if I can throw it, you saw you saw the way I rigged one of them up. Mm -hmm. And the way I rigged one up is I took a bobber stopper, slid it up the line, I put a very, an eighth ounce tungsten weight. And I slid it up the line, and then I put another bobber stopper on the other side, and I slid them both up the line tied an offset hook uh, a Daiichi offset hook red I love red and then I hooked that up and then I rigged my my bait I was using a little creature bait little creature hog and so keeping it separated makes it fall like this making it more flappy and slowing it down with that fall when you're fishing that dingy water you don't want something to go shoom, because the fish goes what was that you know it's dingy give it a little time so when it's fallen, and you say you used to do that with the split shot. Yeah, I did that. Um, I did a video split shotting. Randy's doing the same thing. Randy's uh, technique is probably a little more refined because you can move those uh, bobber stops and move your split shot up and down, which you're going to do that depending on how deep the water is, the weed, the vegetation, so on and so forth. We're very close to the channel now. Yeah, you got that big old chip coming through. So, so that's one of the baits. I like something that's got to have water movement. So a dark colored worm. Yeah, dark colored worm that's got water movement. Maybe it's a 10 inch power worm, maybe it's a creature bait, little critter hog that has all the flappers and all the little things. So it shows that momentum and that water displacement. The other one is a spinner bait. Mm -hmm. Now the spinner bait, because it's dingy water, I'm not doing silvers. Silver only shows up when there is um, sunlight penetration. That's when silver shines. If you take silver and put it in a dark area, silver is not silver. So I go to color blades or gold blades. And I'm a big, big advocate, big, going into the Colorado or Magnum Willow. A Magnum Willow, some nicknamed it a turtle shell blade. It's kind of like a Indiana and it's got the lines in it. I have one sitting over there. It's called a turtle shell. I'll go color or I'll go gold usually chartreuse or I'll go red. I want that bright, bright color and a slow thump, keeping in the strike zone. If I'm fishing up on a shallow water on a low tide, I'm gonna go three eighths. If I've got high tide and I'm fishing up against the bank, I'm gonna go half ounce, cause I gotta get the bait to go down. Throwing the Colorado or the Magnum Willow will keep the bait in the strike zone for longer time and that big thump, dunk, dunk, that big fish will go, oh, I hear something coming, and he'll turn, he'll shift, it gives him time to set up. But if you run something real quick through it, 
if it's clear, you can do that. But if it ain't clear, they don't a, have the visibility. They, no, they do not have the visibility. They've got to be able to hone in on it with that with that uh, vibration. In the, Keep talking. I'm gonna grab that rod okay. for you. Keep talking. So. What I'm getting from Randy now, you're gonna come out with a dark colored worm. I'll tell you, Randy was throwing black and red today, or uh, green and black, green, black, and red. Stick to those colors. Um, and a spinner bait. And I think we were talking about um, keeping the retrieve erratic enough so that it's, it's pulling fish to the bait, but you wanna have that bait moving slow enough so that they can, once they hone in on it, they can find it and then grab it. So that spinnerbait uh, style blade is this one right here. This is called a Magnum Willow. So the Magnum Willow, it looks like an Indiana blade, but because it has that baffles in it, it really gives a good thump. Now, if anybody's done their homework, you know that when this bait hits the water, you're, it's gonna turn very quick, within six inches. Whereas a willow leaf, you have to pull it real quick to get it to start to move. Willow leaf doesn't have the same water volume displacement. So therefore, it takes a little more momentum and on clear, clear water, that's okay. But when the water's dingy, you got to get something that's got some flash to it and a big thumping blade. So this is really important. The other thing I was doing on my worm today, because there is some of the weeds, is I rig mine up a little bit different than most people. So this is a general, and I got it on a Daiichi, a three-aught worm hook, eight-pound test. I want the eight-pound test because I'm not fishing in heavy, heavy, heavy cover. But what I am doing is I'm fishing something whereas I'm in an area where I'm fishing a trough. I rig it to where the nose doesn't have any fishing line in it, and this side, so what happens is it goes this way instead of falling this way so when it falls it's like a just like a pear sail and it hovers and it lays on top of it so when I bring it up I never had any weeds on the nose because it doesn't fall this way it falls this way and then when you lift up from being up in the boat it goes like that the nose goes up and this thing jumps straight up like this out of the water and then it settles back down again. Give me two vibration patterns. One, two. You talked about the vibration pattern when we're throwing a spinner bait or anything that's gonna be moving. You want something that's gonna make that blade not go thump, thump, thump. You wanna go thump, 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 and then let it kill it, and then start it again. That makes it sound like, or feel like to the fish, there's an injury and I'm gonna eat it. Great tips, Randy. And you know, we've talked about so much, it gives you guys months of, uh months of hashing over what we've just talked about but a uh, place for you guys to start and before we take off Randy I want to I want everybody knows that you're the director of the BBT the best bass tournaments uh, if you guys aren't fishing tournaments uh, and you're willing to or thinking about getting into um, a tournament the BBT is a great place to start you might want to say a few things about that and I also want to talk about uh, a lot of you guys may not know but Randy is a full-time fishing guide out here and I'm gonna let you give some um, information on the BBT and how to get a hold of you if uh, you want to come out with Randy and, and be guided on the Delta I highly recommend Randy so uh... so this is our 11th year at Best Bass tournaments and we run six regions from Southern California all the way to Northern California six events per region BBT is all about having fun. I wouldn't have done this, wouldn't have started a tournament circuit unless it's having fun. And everybody that knows me, been around me long enough, knows that I'll be a straight shooter. You get your money when you're supposed to get your money. You get paid at the tournaments and you're going to have a good time. And we're going to laugh, we're going to make jokes, um, and nothing serious, just having a good time. We do this as non-pros, this is where if you're getting too good, we just give you the boot. We wish you all the best, shake your hand, tell them, go fish something at a higher level, you need to move on. The other thing we're doing now is we're doing high school. Yep. We started a high school circuit, we're gonna do six events. It's called TNT, Teen Tournaments. And uh, if you go to fishtnt.com, you can go to the website, it shows you the schedule, and it's all about high school, and in our TOC, for the teen tournament will be at the last day of the BBT. So these kids will get to see 150, 160 boat field, which will be like, holy smokes, this is awesome. And they'll get to have the microphones up to them. They'll be able to come up on a stage and they'll be in front of all the people plotting. 
that's what it's all about having fun with the kids because getting kids out you've done a couple of those yeah. where you're taking the kids out it's extremely important and then last but not least the guide service uh, I've been guiding ever since to when I was 20 something helping me out with uh, uh, some finances uh, so I could fish tournaments I used to fish a lot of tournaments now I just enjoy uh, I'll fish the bass cat open um, every year they have it here and uh, the rest of it uh, um, I'm just guiding and you can get a hold of me at the fishing instructor.com uh, website uh, you can always do that or you can give me a call at area code 209-543-6260 and we can book a date if you got some things that you want to understand I want to learn the 101 Randy I want to learn why you fish in that bank versus that bank we can talk about it if you want to say Randy I got this area that I want to fish and I just, I, I've caught fish in it, but I don't understand it. I said, hey, as long as it's your area, then I can help you dial it in. But if you're looking for me to take you to what I do and my spots, take him. Don't take me, take Randy. <laughs> no, 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 take you. You guys, you guys I mean, for, and that's, you know, I talk about guides all the time. And that's the most important thing when you buy, when you spend a day on the river with a guide you know a lot of guys can take you out and, and put you on a spot to catch fish and that's great but it's more important when you talk to randy or or uh, book a guide date with anyone talk to them let them know what you want randy i'm really terrible at casting i'm really terrible at bait selection i'm really terrible at whatever it is randy will work with you i know i've been around randy a lot and that's why they call him the fishing instructor he'll He'll give you the information that you can use for the next 20 years, and that's a heck of a lot more important than learning a spot that you're going to catch fish that one day. And believe me, I've done this with other guides and go back the, and the next day and not catch fish on that because conditions were wrong. So, you know, it's, it's important to, to learn fishing more than learn spots. I get guys that sit there and say, I'll bring this and I'll bring that and I'll bring that. I go, here's the deal. Don't worry about fishing tackle. I got left-handed retrieve reels brand new in the box. Put them on the reels, you'll be good there. I got right-handed retrieve reels. We keep 30 on board. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, what about fishing lures? If you're hiring me, you don't want to bring your lures. You want to see what the guide is recommending, how he rigs it, how he throws it, what's his interpretation of how he displays it in the water. Learning all that, then you take that knowledge, go back home going, I think I can do that doing what this is and that. Then you put all it together and mix it all up. Now you've got your techniques, your way of approaching, and now you've got the little car keys. Now you can drive your own car. And I will, uh, just for you guys, I'll, I'll make sure to put all of Randy's information on his uh, BBT tournaments and how to get a hold of Randy for a guide down in the comments. And, you know, one other thing before we go, Randy, we talked about maybe doing another um, uh, video sometime on how to choose a tournament partner. We talked about how, you know, the horror stories that, well, you've had, I've had, that we've heard, you know, people that start out as friends and end up as, uh, it's, end up as bitter uh, rivals. Uh, it's kind of like a marriage and there's a lot that I think the, the younger guys that are just getting started out um, could benefit from, uh, from maybe a, a little chat we can sit down and, and do something on how to choose a team partner what, what do you what do you when you talk about you know you've got to be in the right position financially uh, mentally you know you, your skill levels and, and all of that and so uh, you know if you guys would like to see something like that let us know in the in the comments and uh, I'll get Randy out here and we'll spend 20 minutes or so talking about how to choose it we team can partner. actually go out on the water because one of the major problems is one guy fishes too fast mm -hmm. one guy fishes too slow yeah. and I can teach you how to make that for a better team instead of fighting with your partner when mm -hmm. you you want to throw that worm right and I want to throw that crankbait mm -hmm. so then we we got to work together so um, and we could talk about that sure. and uh, we can actually put a, a, a camera on that and while we're talking we're both fishing and we, we're going over that rhythm and yeah. how, how do you make it work to where not one guy thinks he's getting the you know the bum leg out right, right. and you know it's it is a team and when I was fishing teams uh, 
I didn't care if I caught one fish or five fish, if, as long as they were 30 pounds. Hey, you yeah. know what? The check but spins both ways. Usually when somebody's doing really well on a team, it's because he's got a partner that's working with They're him. They're chilling. Yeah, so that's you know that would be a good thing. Maybe we could even catch some fish if we go out there and do that. That'd be nice, huh? Okay. So, Randy, thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you guys are, are interested in that how to choose a team partner video. And uh, I'll hit Randy up and... Maybe later in the summer when things get going, we'll go out again and we'll have a uh, uh, on the water video. We had some, we had a few problems out there today, but we we uh, we got back in and we're gonna live to fight another day. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys uh, on the water. On the water. <laughs>